Hello! Um, so this is going to be the video for our A-scale arpeggios and um, Mesa. Kind of like last time, I'll play the song, or the scale, and then talk about each part of it. Um, so yeah, make sure you're all tuned and ready to go, and we'll get started. So first we're going to look at the pizzicato open string study. Uh, the purpose of looking at this is to see the resonance that each string makes. So like when you pluck it, you can kind of you hear a vibration of the actual string being plucked, as well as some like higher and lower notes in between that just kind of make it sound like a violin. Um, so I'm going to play that real quick. You probably won't be able to hear it in the video, but when you try it yourself, if your violin is in tune correctly, um, you'll hear kind of this resonance and um, kind of the sound going through the entire instrument as well as the string itself vibrating. So I'm going to play that real quick, and you can follow along or um, try it yourself afterwards. For our pizzicato, I might have showed you this out of Ermber. You want to make a thumbs up, then press your thumb right at the bottom, base of your fingerboard, and then use your pointer finger to pluck the strings. Like that. Alright, so this is the pizzicato open string study, little um, couple measures right here. Repeat. Now as you play that, you can definitely hear some bits of resonance and um, as well as just the string itself vibrating. Then what you want to do with the arco, with um, using our bow, you want to try and create that same resonance. Um, if you're holding the bow correctly and you're putting the right amount of pressure on it, you'll hear the same resonance that you do when you're just plucking the strings. So I'm going to play that real quick um, and either play along with me or try it yourself afterwards. You can pause the video to do that. And we'll see how this sounds. So we've got our open A and our open E. Especially at the end, you can hear that bit of resonance. So now we're going to look at the scale and arpeggios in A major. Um, these are just a couple of different versions of arpeggios. Arpeggio is um, part, it's like bits and pieces of the scale. It's what makes up an A chord. So there's going to be a skip in between the first three notes. In this case, we'll be going from A to C sharp to E, and then back up to A, which is going to be a skip plus one more note, or a fourth. And when you play them together on a different instrument, it has a very harmonic, a very pretty tone to it. So I'm going to play that first line up there with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight measures. Um, it's just our scale. And then I'll play arpeggios A, B, and C. All right. So make sure that you got your hand in position, wrist out, bow hold correct, arm up. Can't see that part, but you know, get your posture. All right, here it goes. One, two, three, four. And then I would highly recommend saying the letters as you play them, um, partially just to get used to saying the notes forward and backwards, which is helpful, um, and then also to make the connection between the letter and the placement of your fingers on the violin. So now looking at those arpeggios A, B, and C, uh, the first one is your simple arpeggio, um, going up by skips, so A, C, E, A, and then back down, E, C, sharp, C sharp, A. Um, the second one, you're going to be going up a little bit. You're changing them as you go. So going from the A, C, F, A, and then back down to F. And then for your the C, we're going from an A to a D, and then F, A, and back down from there. Um, I'll play those, and then you can... 
play along with me or pause the video and try it yourself. One, two, three, go. second and third ones do sound a little bit interesting. That's because they're not the perfect harmonies that the arpeggios are. Um, but it just gets you a little bit of practice of going between your strings and um, hearing the different sounds of different harmonies. So I would say to practice um, that first full scale and then the arpeggio number A, just um, especially in May song because you do use that arpeggio quite a bit. So now we're going to look at the May song. I'll play it through once and then we'll talk about each part of it. All right. One, two, three, four. So again, um, one really important part of the song is the rhythm. We have a dotted ha dotted quarter note, sorry, um, and then eight four measures one, three, then nine and eleven. Um, there is an exercise for that down underneath the song with just your A string and your E string um, to practice getting that rhythm down. Um, you count it as one, two, and three, four. Um, the first note being one, two, and because you have your full for full first beat and then half of the second. Um, so it would sound that little exercise would sound like this: one, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. Then you'd repeat that a couple times. Um, I definitely practice that, and then also practice um, the measures that have a quarter note, then two eighth notes, and then a half note. Um, those are a little bit easier, but I would still recommend practicing them just at first on one string. So same idea as the rhythm underneath, or the exercise underneath. So you just play one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Um, to practice those rhythms and then add the timing. Um, start it nice and slow, but try and keep it steady. So even if you have a metronome or a rhythm of just like one, two, three, four, um, I would definitely do that when you're practicing so that you're learning both the notes and the rhythm together. Because if you learn the notes but the rhythm is off, your brain kind of remembers it the way you learned it, and um, it's hard to reteach it with the correct rhythm. Another aspect of this song is the dynamics. Um, so you have playing, you're playing forte up until measure five, six, seven on um, your new piano and then back to forte. Oh, and you have mezzo forte, sorry I missed that one, at measure five. So starting loud, then quieting down a little bit and then going all, all the way down to piano and then jump back up to forte. Try and make that um, transition between measures eight and nine from piano to forte really really clear um this is a you know a folk song it's kind of fun so you want to give it that extra life of starting fairly quiet and then jumping up into the forte um yeah so i'm going to play it again a little bit slower so that you can play along with that um make sure you're paying attention to your intonation um i know it's a lot to do at once with the rhythm and the notes and the intonation 
but practicing over and over and over again, just take it one line at a time. Um, I'd recommend just doing the first line until you get it three times perfect, and the second line until you get it three times perfect, and then put them together three times perfect um, until you've got the whole song down. But yeah, I'll play it one more time a little bit slower for you to play along with. One, two, three, four. That's about it. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any questions or want me to go over anything. I'm always happy to help. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you later. Bye.